Maps are an essential component in studying local and family history, but sometimes local maps can be difficult to track down. Our speaker, Lisa Robinson, will help us learn where to go, both in person and online, in our search for this important resource. Lisa has lived in the San Lorenzo Valley since 1990. She has been president of the board of directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Historical Society, which owns and operates the San Lorenzo Valley Museum, where she manages the exhibitions and collections. Lisa is the author of The San Lorenzo Valley, published by Arcadia Press, and editor of Redwood Logging and Conservation in the Santa Cruz Mountains, A Split History, great title, published by the Santa Cruz Museum of Art and History. In addition, Lisa writes local history columns for San Lorenzo Valley publications. So please join me in giving Lisa Robinson a warm welcome. Thank you for being here, Lisa. Thank you, Gail, for that um, a warm welcome. Um, all right, local maps and where to find them. So we're going to start by just um, talking, talking a little bit about the public land survey system. Um, that's the township range and section. So this is something that is just a backdrop for the maps that you will be looking at. So in 18, uh, sorry, 1785, using astronomical starting points, unoccupied government land was surveyed and make that point, unoccupied government land um, was surveyed and divided into six uh, mile square quadrangles called townships. Each township was divided into 36 sections and each section was one square mile or 640 acres. In 1862, the Homestead Act was passed and signed into law. The newly established law had um, a threefold component to acquiring the land. You had to file an application, you had to improve the land, and then you had to file a deed or title. Any US citizen um, or intended citizen who had never borne arms against uh, the US government could file an application and lay claim to 160 acres of surveyed government land. Four times 160 is the 640, okay. For the next five years, the homestead they had to be their primary uh, residence and they had to make improvements upon the land. After five years, the homesteader could file his or her patent or deed of title by submitting proof of residency and the required improvements to a local um, land office. And usually the, uh, the, the proof was your neighbors. Your neighbors would, would, would say how well you've done. You, um, so you can see on, on here, there's an initial point, okay? Um, there are multiple initial points throughout the United States. Here in California, our initial point is Mount Diablo. That's our principal meridian. The link here is to the um, uh, Mount Diablo Surveyors Historical Society. So it's got a little history of uh, surveying. Uh, what you see here is Santa Cruz County quadrangles. So these are each um, square here was subdivided into four, and then uh, and that those were the 160 acres that, that you could apply for. Now you can see along the coast and a little bit further south, um, the the blank areas. Those are the ranchos. Those were those were already occupied land. They were the Mexican land grants in Santa Cruz County. Um, and uh, the square that you see highlighted, number 28 there, um, that would be Township 9 South, Range 2 West, Section 28. So that's what you would see in, uh, in any land grant um, uh, map, any land grant filing. The problem is that when you do a land uh, the, the lists of the land grants, here they are, this is for Santa Cruz County. You can see the MD stands for Mount Diablo. You can see, say here, um, uh, 90 South, 20 West, and then there's three, section three. So there's one, two, three, four, there's actually six section threes, but there are only four 
land grants in a section. So obviously what happened here was that um, multiple people applied, some people didn't actually get the grant and it went to somebody else. But you also don't know, is it the Northwest, let's go back. You don't know, it's, if you look at this section 14 here, you don't know, is it the Northeast quarter, the Northwest quarter, that wasn't, that isn't recorded in the list. So you have to work that out, but, but typically you, you can figure that out from the maps. Okay. Um, so this is this is the list of land grants for Santa Cruz County. Okay, let's start looking at some map collections. I'm going to start here with the Daisy, David Rumsey map collection. You're probably all familiar with that at Stanford University. Um, it's it's online and available there. I like to look at the David Rumsey map collection on David Rumsey's um, website. I much prefer his interface. There are some challenges. So if you do a search for Santa Cruz, you're going to get 151 hits. If you do a search for Santa Cruz, California, you'll get 10 hits. If you do a Santa Cruz in the location, Santa Cruz, Calif, you'll get five different hits. They're all valid. So you've got to be, you, you don't give up. If you think there should be a map there, it's, you're so dependent upon how that map has been filed within the system, what tags have been put onto it, what, what's in the metadata. So don't give up. Try different searches um, with different, um, in different ways. Um, also, don't forget to look for Atlas because a lot of Santa Cruz maps are in atlases. They're not classified as maps, they're classified as atlases, as in this one here. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Oops. Um, there's a thing at the corner on the David Rumsey map collection, uh, which is is called the geo referencer, and I find this is a lot of fun. So it overlays the the map that you're the historical map that you're looking at on top of a map of today, and then there's a slider bar where you can slide and change the opacity of the historical map and what this allows you to do and here you can see the overlay it allows you to see how the waterways in particular the street configurations have changed over time so it's a very useful tool okay let's move on to the california state archives and this is the uh, decennio collection so um a decennio of course is a a, a rough hand-drawn map depicting a Spanish or a Mexican land grant. In Santa Cruz um, County, there are only Mexican land grants and there are 17 of them. So here I'm doing um, a search uh, on in the Decenio collection of uh, Refugio and you can see it's produced zero results. Well, that's not to be expected. And in fact, if you browse, you can find the rancho. So again, don't be put off by the search results. It's all dependent upon what's in the metadata. Sometimes you're gonna to have to browse the collection to find what you're looking for. The California State Library has a large number of maps and very, very few of them are available online. You, you will need to search the catalog to see if, um, if they have the map, but as they say on this page, their catalog isn't online. It's a card catalog in the library, a physical card catalog. So you actually have to go to get access to both the catalog, card catalog of the maps and the maps themselves. This is um, a map from the California State Library. Um, I was very fortunate to be able to access this. It's a beautiful hand-drawn book of decennios. Um, that I was able to, uh, to see when we were on the 2019 Genealogy Society trip to the State Archives and State Library in Sacramento. This, um, you can see at the top here, it says that it's to uh, the President of the United Mexican States. And just here, what it says is the bearer's signature. And the bearer's signature is indeed our own Isaac Graham. Um, here's uh, one, of the, one of the maps. I, I was able to photograph it, um, all of the uh, local decennios uh, 
uh, in the book. This is the boot metal. The California State Library also has the 1912 Pope map of Big Basin. And this is a beautifully beautiful map. Um, here it is, hand-drawn map. It's got a lot of detail of the surrounding area. And um, the late Stan Stevens wrote the history of the Pope map with this as a link to the, the, the document with an explanation of all the named geographical features. Moving along, uh, Library of Congress. This is a really important map. It's the, the first official, I say official, um, uh, map of uh, the res uh, occupancy in Santa Cruz County. It's the first um, map with people's, uh, official map with people's name on it, names on it. And this is a link to it. You can download, now a lot of people try and sell you this map um in printed form it don't um it, it's it's much better in digital form because you can really zoom in um it is in the public domain of course here it is and you can see the the size of the image that you can download from the library of congress so you're going to get a really high resolution uh map uh that you can use and and when you look at that map let's just go back up um you you'll still see some of those 160 acre parcels and what you also might find confusing is sometimes there'll be a, a name and it's 320 or 640 acres or well, what families would do was that that if you had adult children in your family you could apply for consecutive um parcels so as a family you actually are granted a larger piece the late stanley stevens did a lot of research on this map and he um, wrote the book names on the map which is published by the Santa Cruz Museum of Natural History um, with uh, with each of the names uh, and, and and an explanation of the family in in the book um, highly recommend it and you see Stan has put here first in quotes on uh, and we'll talk about why that is in a moment Okay, so the Santa Cruz Museum of Art and History, they do not have their, um, they do not have a finding aid on their website for their maps, but they do have maps in their collection. Um, there is an, an inventory online, so you can actually look up um, the, uh, the maps in the inventory. Um, this, they did a, a wonderful exhibition back in 2013 on maps, and the, these are just a couple of the maps that they had on display. They had, they, you know, these are original maps, so they had very uh, dim lighting. So I, I apologize for the, the dimness of these photographs, um, but they, they have a, an, an excellent selection of early Santa Cruz hand-drawn maps. Um, what you see on the left is uh, Rancho Sayanti uh, in a lot of detail plus the surrounding areas. Okay, Library of Congress Sanborn maps. Well, you, we used to go to the uh, uh, Santa Cruz um, Special Collections, uh, UCSC Santa Cruz Special Collections to get the Sanborn maps, but they've been down for a while. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, the Library of Congress has the Sanborn maps. Now, these are fire insurance maps, so they're not going to cover the rural areas. They're only going to be covering the downtown areas. They were um, uh, maps that were drawn where there might be an insurance claim. The way that they, um, the way that they created these maps was they created them once when an, uh, when an area became populous and um, you'll see in on the map on the left, um, there's uh, mostly yellow buildings, a few um, gray buildings, but most importantly, a red building right here. And that's because it's an oven. So it's a high risk area. It was the bakery's oven. Um, the maps were drawn and then updated by taking a piece of paper and sticking it over the old map. So these maps, are like a three-dimensional history of what's uh, what was happening. Um, we happen to have one in the collection that you, you won't find online. We have photographed it. This is a 1931 Boulder Creek Sanborn map. 
that is based on the 1908 map. So you can see it says here corrected in 1931. You, you might just be able to see this is Highway 236. It wasn't there in 1908. So the buildings have been pasted over. If you hold the page up to the light, you can see the pastings. Hmm. Right. This is a key to the Sanborn map. So you get to learn exactly what was going on, how the buildings changed, what the buildings changed to, and what the uses were. Um, uh, so this is a link to the uh, interpretation, how you interpret these, these maps. Okay, let's go on to the historical topographical maps. Um, there are many, many online. So, for example, if I search for Ben Loman, I get 36 hits, the, the earliest being 1902. So great. Um, it's great for looking at how roads have changed, how waterways have changed, and uh, buildings are sometimes marked on these maps, uh, in, in particular mills and sawmills, things like that. And then this is a link to the key to these uh, these um, topographical maps. Now, I would say that some of the very early maps say that were done by um, uh, the coastal surveys, they used some of the same um, uh, 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 symbols for the key, for, for their keys, but I don't have a link to an, a historical key for those maps. So, but you can sometimes look at the, these this key and, and 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 use what it says how about geology of course geology was important for their natural resources you might have you might want to be looking at you know where was where we're all where was the lime industry um my relative might have been working in 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 that field and you can download a wonderful uh a geology map of santa cruz county here Okay, let's get to the UCSC digital map collection, which is no longer online. It is available on campus. But even though we know that these maps um, have been digitized, you cannot get access to them if you are not on campus. This is what you're going to do to make the process easy. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the um, Wayback Machine. That's the Internet Archive um, uh, captures of the web as far back as uh, the late 1990s. So here you can see the, the Wayback Machine has uh, 51 captures of the uh, old UCSC digital map collection. I've got a link here. I chose 2015, kind of late. It was before they took it down, but when you know they still they, they it, it, this is what it looked like back in 2015. You can see um, you can see the different maps that they've got. Um, the Wright Bennett Healy map, and we'll talk about that one. The Hatch map, we don't have to worry about. We've got another link to that. We've got these Punic Brother maps down here. We're going to talk about those and where to access those. But we have got some maps, particularly this Wright Bennett Healy map, that you cannot find anywhere else. So what do you do? Go back. You're going to click on the Wright Bennett Healy in the Wayback Machine. It's going to bring up the index map. The index map was captured. So now you can look at the index map and say, I need sheet 14. That makes it easier for you to go to UCSC and say, I, I'm, I'm looking for sheet 14 of the Wright Bennett Healy 1881 map. Mm -hmm. It makes the process a lot easier for you. Okay. Some of these have been captured elsewhere. We, we do have a few low resolution copies of these maps at the San Lorenzo Valley Museum. We've also got some of these maps in hard copy format where other researchers have donated them back to us. Um, but they're in pretty, then th th these maps were not very high resolution uh, when they were printed. So you, you're still best to go take a look at the, uh, 
um, the original digitized map at UCSC. This is the oldest, not official, but the oldest land ownership map of Santa Cruz County. And then we come to the Punnett brothers. There's a 1906 um, map and the 1914 map. Well, fortunately, years ago, I did download um, from the UCSC website, the 1906 map. This is another map that you will find people wanting to sell you a printed copy of. Again, don't buy it. But it is not available in digital form until, thankfully, UCSC gave the San Renzo Valley Museum permission to publish and put it up on our website. So this is a link to that map. So it's on our website. The 1914 map. Um, is available in the David Rumsey collection, and that's a, a link to that. Um, so there it is, that's the 1906 map, um, courtesy of UCSC, but available on the on our museum website. And um, let's get to this one. This is These are really important maps. This is the standard map service out of Watsonville. Um, and they used to be available on the UCSC website. Then they are no longer, but the index is. So you'll be able to look at the index and tell them which one you want. Again, it's just, an, uh, uh, you know, rather than you um, spending an awful lot of time trying to figure out, you know, looking through pages, you'll be able to look at the index and say, yeah, I need sheets 58 or whatever. We do have a limited number of these um, in digital form at the San Lorenzo Valley Museum. The copy that we have was, um, uh, from a local re real estate agent, and it is in pretty poor condition, but it has been photographed. Having said that, these maps were heavily used in real estate offices. So if there's an area where you're, you're really looking for these standard maps, I would recommend if there's been a real estate office that hasn't moved for a very long time, check them out because that might be in their, um, in, in their drawer somewhere. This is, uh, this is sheet nine, where are we looking here? Scotts Valley. Other kinds of maps. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you've got a relative that's in the lumber industry, you might be interested in Robert Rood's 1975 thesis where he listed um, all of the uh, uh, lumber mills, shingle, shake, box, you name it, but not just sawmills in Santa Cruz County and by era. Um, we have taken this spreadsheet that he did on an old fashioned typewriter and ha now have an Excel spreadsheet and we've been adding to um, to that list, we have a, 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 a over 400 mills listed. There's also a map that goes along with that and you can see each of the ones that he identified, he actually put on the map, so you can see where they were. This allows you also to then go to an institution and say, do you have in information on, say, Hoffman's Shingle Mill, which they may well have a memoir or something like that about that mill. There's also some great book, a couple of great books uh, in the Pigeon Point area that have been written that contain lists of names of people that worked at the, at the mills. Okay, the online archive of California, there are tons of maps referenced at the online archive of California, most of which will be um, not digitized. You will need to go to the institution. Um, they give the uh, details of how to get in contact with that institution. However, there are some that are online. This is uh, Bancroft's um, finding aid to the maps of private land grants in California. Um, so we can click on any of these um, oh, and we can access. So we've got um, Rancho de Santa Sente down here. So um, I, I'd highly recommend you, you, you access the Online Archive of California for looking for maps. Again, be careful how you're searching. Don't give up. Try lots of different ways of, uh, of, of looking for your search. And of course, lots of um, Lots of maps changed in their spelling, so try alternate spellings too. This is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric um, Administration 
uh, historical map collection, they have a large number of coastal maps that actually go quite a ways inland. So if you're, if, if you're in Santa Cruz uh, or one of the, the, the cities that are on the, uh, the coast, um, these are great maps to go take a look at, particularly Watsonville. I mean, gosh, what, what a change. Take a look at the Watsonville maps. Okay, online repositories of multiple collections. So I've just listed here repositories that contain multiple collections from different places, the Online Archive of California, Calisphere, California Revealed, the Internet Archive and Hathi Trust. And I'm just wanting to point out that the California Digital Library is kind of like an over branching uh, University of California um, uh, repository for multiple things. And you can see they collect, they publish, they preserve and they Ac uh, give access to. So you can see Online Archive of California falls in the access. Um, we've got um, Calisphere in the collect, but both of them share data online. All of them share data online. Probably my favorite tool, uh, the Santa Cruz County G GIS web. Um, this is an interactive online tool. I want to point out the legend just here, because this is, you can turn on and off different layers. I'm not going to go into that aspect of it. This is not, a, this is not on using the GIS web, although we could talk about that for a very long time because it's absolutely fascinating. What we're gonna do here is talk about the maps that you can access. So you pick a parcel, picked a random parcel here. Here's the parcel, just happens to be the museum's location in Felton. Some important, keys here so we've got the assessor parcel number the assessor parcel map that's the current map what i like to do is i like to look at the cancelled maps because that's going to change you how ch show you how this subdivision has changed over time i also want to point out recorded maps and docs here this when we click on recorded maps and dot you'll see the, these are the i've just turned on the parcel numbers you'll see all these different parcel numbers here's the cancelled apns assessor parcel numbers and let's have a look here we've got 1970 what's the earliest oh 1966 so now we can actually see how this parcel has changed within its subdivision since 1966 so that's very useful. It might mean that the assessor parcel number has changed, which might mean that your search, when you're searching, say, newspapers.com, you might need a different assessor parcel number because it's the, the numbers have changed over time. And that is almost ubiquitous for any parcel. Here's the recorded maps. So you'll see these are the recorded maps for this, this area. I don't know if it's this area or somewhere else. It's this area. Um, so the, here's the original subdivision for uh, Forest Lakes. So I must have been looking at Forest Lakes at the time, um, which is great. Sometimes they have names written in them, but at least they'll have lot and block numbers as, or however they describe the subdivision. So you can look those up in the newspaper. Then there's the non-recorded maps. Now, when you look at these, look at the recorded maps and you look at how what their names are. And then you look at the non-recorded maps and you look at their names. You start to see a pattern in them and you're thinking, you know what? These look like draw numbers to me, right? So if, I'm, if I've got this map in a draw, maybe there's something else in the same draw that might be of interest. So what you can do is you play with the URL. So here is the URL of a non-recorded map a03, I don't know, but maybe that's draw A03. I don't know. 035. What if I change that three to a two? What do I get? And so now you can actually look, even if the map isn't linked in to the GIS, you can actually start looking at different different maps throughout the system that have been recorded. Uh, and these are the non-recorded maps. So it's just it's just a fun way if you Want something fun to do on an afternoon that's what i do <laughs> um and then you sometimes find a map that you perhaps weren't looking for and that's the, that, that and then and when you find one it's just like oh wow now i found something um it's it's got 
not just the county, but it has the city too. So you can uh, zoom in on the city, same thing. And Watsonville, to, oh, Branson 40, the uh, Branson 40 map of 1863, absolutely fascinating map. Um, and, and Watsonville also, this is a very <laughs> early map of, of a plat of Watsonville. Other places to look for maps. Um, well, I like to look in the general plans and I'm not just talking about city um, general plans, uh, but also general plans of say areas, Castle Rock State Park, this is Big Basin State Park. And here they have produced a wonderful um, uh, map from 1924 showing all the historical buildings of Big Basin State Park in the general in the 2013 general plan um but yeah a city and county uh general plans also here's um the aptos village general plan um, and there's a link to the town plans here other kinds of maps um you might be interested in the railroads and how the railroads affected transportation within the area of course santa cruz trains has has a, a wonderful map with all the stations listed, uh, they, and they break, they've broken down the different lines into smaller sections, so you can actually see they not only include the main lines, but also the sidings, which are incredibly important because that's where um, the industry was happening on those uh, on those uh, sidelines. But there's also a, a Google map where you can really zoom in on any of the Santa Cruz County uh, railroads and um, and uh, um, see in detail the, the route of the railroad and the um, and the stations. There's also the Pacific Coast Railroad uh, map from 1866 that is now in a Google map, um, which will, uh, is online. The link here. And there's the California State Railroad Museum archives. They do not have very much online at all anything they've got they have got a um uh a catalog or a finding aid i should i should say so you can take a look down the finding aid but that's going to take us a trip to the um the railroad museum getting towards the end here i know i speak very fast <laughs> getting towards the end here um i'd also recommend you look in memoirs because memoirs often contain hand-drawn admittedly maps but of things that you might not think to look for so uh, this uh and this is this is just one that i picked out the memories of the mountain it's um life in bonnie dune and uh two of the maps that are in that book um, there, there are ma many memoirs uh, throughout Santa Cruz County. We're very, very fortunate to have so many. Um, I, would rec I would highly recommend you look in those memoirs. And then finally, I'm pretty sure none of you will have seen this map because it's only just gone online. This is a 1936 Santa Cruz County land ownership map. It's a very large map, um, it's 90 inches by 50 inches. So this is actually available at California Revealed and on the Internet Archive. It, because it's such a large map and it's very high resolution, it takes a long time to load. So you have to be patient, just start it loading, go get a cup of coffee and come back. Um, but then you can really zoom in. And as you can see, it's very high resolution. Um, this is from the San Lorenzo Valley Museum collection. So I'm gonna stop at that point and take any questions. Um, Thank you.